Let's discuss the expected value of a discrete random variable. So this random variable x has a probability distribution function given by f of x which is defined as this probability and we would like to define a concept called the expected value of x. It's denoted by e parenthesis x and it's a number. Before we discuss the relevance of this particular number, let's just learn the mathematical definition without thinking too much about what we're doing. So remember x is discrete Let's begin by assuming that it takes a finite number of values. So the range is, it takes x1, x2, all the way to some xn, n different values. And we have a probability distribution function, which tells us exactly the probability that it will take x1, x2, and so on. So for a concrete example, let's move to Excel. So here's an example. X can take five different values. And I'm just making up some values here. It doesn't really matter which these values are. Say two, four, five, seven, and nine. Then we also need to specify the probability distribution function the probabilities of these, so I'm just making up some probabilities here. And let's just double check that I added numbers which will add to 1, which they have to. Yes. So this setup completely defines a discrete random variable. We can see the range 24579 and we can see the probability distribution function given for each of these x's. For any other x, we define f of x to be 0. So here's the definition. Don't worry too much if it doesn't make any sense. e of x, the expected value of x, is defined as a sum where i goes from 1, that's the first x, to n, that's the last one. Then, in the sum, you're supposed to multiply xi with f of xi. That is, you multiply the actual value with the probability that x will take this value. That is the expected value defined for a discrete random variable x. I put this definition into Excel so we can see exactly what we're supposed to do. So the sum i goes from 1 to n, well that's just rows going from 2 to 6. Uh, so when i is equal to 1, then we're at row 2. And for i equal to 1, we're supposed to multiply xi by f of xi. That is, we're supposed to multiply these two together. So let's do that, equal to this. Like that. So that is x1 times f of x1. If I copy this down, here I have x2 times f of x2, x3 times f of x3, and so on. And the final thing it does, it says that I'm supposed to sum all these products. So let's do that. Just click the auto sum, and I get the answer 5.1, and that is the expected value of this random variable. Let's talk a little bit about what this means. One way you can understand this is by looking at the case where each outcome is equally likely. So if I change this to 0.2 for all outcome, then the answer will be 5.4. Well, 5.4 just happens to be exactly the average of these numbers. as you see here I get 5.4. So in the case when I have a 
discrete random variable and every outcome is equally likely, then the expected value is simply the average of all possible outcomes. So how should you interpret it if each outcome is not equally likely? Well, let's make an experiment. Let's change this to 0 0.4 and let's change these to 0.1 and 0 0.1 so it still adds up to 1. In this case you can see that the expected value changed to 6.6 .6, which is now higher than the average. So that might give you a hint about what the expected value is. So the expected value is simply a weighted average, a weighted average of these possible outcomes. And the weights are precisely the probabilities. So in this case I have a higher weight on this 9 and a lower weight on this 2 and 4. And that's why the expected value came out larger than the average. Similarly, if I had changed this to 0.4 and taken down these to 0.1, then I will get a lower expected value. So at this point, I recommend you to think about the expected value as a weighted average. Later on, as you move along in probability theory, there will be an alternative way of thinking about the expected value of a random variable. But for now, this is good enough.